Emma Vigland of Rebel Headquarters spoke to Warren supporters at a rally of hers. And um, Emma asked, hey, why her and not Bernie? Now, you understand why that question would be asked. They align ideologically, except Bernie is the original version. Elizabeth Warren is the light version. She's Bernie Sanders light. And over time, she's gotten lighter and lighter. So, question is, like, why? Why her? Let's see what they say. Senator Elizabeth Warren has filled out this Washington Square Park rally here in New York City. There's so many people here. Her popularity just keeps growing and growing. So I wanted to ask her supporters, why her? Why not Bernie Sanders? If it's really just on policy, those two are closest. So why support her over the further left, more democratic socialist version in Bernie. I think Bernie's message kind of resonated with everyone at first and she can kind of carry the torch farther than he can with others, different uh, demographics and supporters and things like that. So I think she has a more of electability factor than Bernie does this time around. I got into Elizabeth Warren a long time ago. If you remember in 08, the housing crisis in California, we lost our home, including everybody on my row in Sacramento, California, along with rows and rows of homes. And I couldn't understand it. I was still in high school, so I didn't understand why we lost our home, but they just said, you know, the recession, right? So as I got older, I got some researching, and I saw her. And how she's been fighting and screaming at the top of her lungs about why we're going to a recession, how this can bankrupt American families, and at the end of the day, what we can do about it. So then she ran for Senate, and then she's been out there being the voice of what I really have been going through. So I believe in her in my heart and soul. I understand the Bernie supporters, I get them. But Elizabeth is my heart and soul because I feel like she's really speaking to what I've been through. And I'm still a capitalist. I still believe in markets, but I believe in rules and regulations. Like everything she believes in, I really do believe in. I like Senator Warren because she has, well, like her slogan is, I have a plan for everything, but also she talks about getting rid of the filibuster, which I think is very important because nothing will be passed if you don't get rid of the filibuster because we'll never have enough votes in the Senate to get anything passed. And I just think she's so smart and she's awesome. I just love her. I, I like Bernie too. I think a great ticket would be her and Bernie, but that's too much to ask. Bernie, why are you here at this Elizabeth Warren rally? Shit. You know, I don't know. <laughs> All right, should be campaigning, get back to it. She's not my candidate yet, 100%. I like Pete Buttigieg, but I like her, I like, I like that she has a plan. Um, All right, so it's between her and Pete Buttigieg. Oh yeah, but also maybe even Amy Klobuchar and Cory Booker. I'm not, I'm not even close to picking one person yet. But if I'm gonna go, for somebody like on the left side of the spectrum, it's going to be Elizabeth Warren as opposed to any of the others like Bernie or anybody like that. So, so why not Bernie? Um, it's time for a woman is all. I mean, Bernie's over and done. Didn't do it the last time. I've, Elizabeth has more energy. I think she's got more intelligence. So uh, I think more people can relate to her. And I like that she's a woman, and um, and she's very smart. She's very sharp. I mean, I don't. I'm not sure any of them are as quite as smart as she is. Bernie's a great guy. He's fought really hard, but I just don't think that people are going to elect someone that of that age, unfortunately. Um, and it would be great to see a woman president. I think that this country, this country elected Barack Obama, the first Amer African American president, we can't elect the first woman. I think that's where this country needs to go. Okay, so let's dissect those answers. There's actually two answers there that I honestly think are perfectly reasonable. And, um, you know, they gave things that would make somebody actually support Elizabeth Warren over Bernie Sanders, so I wouldn't even argue with them. I'd say, hey, if that's your criteria, then you made the right choice. So, and the ones I'm referring to are the one who said, well, she wants to get rid of the filibuster, and that's like the most important thing to me. And Bernie is not in favor of getting rid of the filibuster. Elizabeth Warren is in favor of getting rid of the filibuster. So that's actually a perfectly, you know, reasonable thing to say. Like, if that's your main concern, then sure, go, go right ahead. Like, I wouldn't argue with that person at all. And I'd say, you've obviously thought about this. 
and you have a solid reason. So do you. Um, and the other one that I wouldn't argue with is the guy who lost his home and, you know, he was saying she perfectly described uh, the the subprime mortgage crisis and the Great Recession before it happened and she's been pushing the solutions. And on that, I would say, yeah, I mean, she, I, I covered that segment actually where way before the subprime mortgage crisis and the Great Recession happened, she explained in perfect detail how it was going to unfold. And what I would say on this one is, yes, that guy happens to care most about the specific issues where she shines. So when it comes to Wall Street, when it comes to regulatory issues, that's her thing. Now, that's not saying Bernie's bad on those issues because he's not. In fact, he probably is a little bit better on those issues. But you can see how a dude who lost his home was looking for answers and found somebody who got the answer exactly right before it even happened and has been pushing the solutions why he would go in that direction. So honestly, those two people, I wouldn't even argue with them. And I'm sure I'd get along with them and, you know, it'd be perfectly lovely. The rest of them, not only would I argue with, I would like, I'd have to stop myself from mocking them. <laughs> so let's go through the rest of them. Um, the first dude said she can carry the torch further with different demographics. Here we go. Beeping McBeepington time. At least once a show, we get a fucking computer problem where it's beeping. Ready? Listen. It stopped. The second I start talking, it's going to go again, bro. Watch. Ready? So, Elizabeth Warren... <laughs> Alright, it's good, at least for now. <laughs> I really hope it doesn't start beeping again. Uh, the first dude said, she can carry the torch further with different demographics. Really? Who? Who? Because that's not true. Bernie has the most diverse supporters of all the candidates, by far. Which, the people who she's doing well with are, you know, college-educated white people. Now, am I saying college-educated white people don't matter? No. But what I am saying is Bernie has the most diverse coalition. So to say that she can carry the torch further with different demographics, that's not true because Bernie absolutely can get white college-educated voters, but he also gets everybody else. <laughs> so he carries the torch further with different demographics. So that person is just flat wrong. Um, and then we got the person who was just confused. This was probably the worst answer of all of them. We're just like, well, you know, I like Warren. If I wanted to support somebody on the left side of the spectrum, I would go with her. But I also like Mayor Pete. And I also like Amy Klobuchar and Cory Booker. That makes no sense. You're picking people who are all over the political spectrum. So what you're saying to people is, I identify as... Um, you know, a reform capitalist, reform lefty capitalist. And I also identify as, um, you know, somebody who is a corporate Democrat and a right wing Democrat. So you're all over the place. And those ideologies don't mesh. It's one or the other. They're mutually exclusive. You have to pick one. So really, obviously, she's just making decisions based on totally arbitrary metrics. And that annoys me. And to go back to, for just one second, because I forgot to mention this to the one of the people who I wouldn't argue with, the dude who lost his home, he also went on to say, I'm a capitalist, and I believe in regulated capitalism. Okay, so that's fair enough. Go ahead. That supporting her over Bernie in, in that instance, I think is totally fine. Now, I would say, though, that technically, if you really want to get specific here, Bernie's not post-capitalist either. I know he calls himself a democratic socialist, but he's really just a social democrat. There's the beep again. He's really just a social democrat, which is still, there's still elements of capitalism in the system under that kind of a system. So technically he's not post-capitalist either, but I could still say I'm not angry at that dude because at least he's thought through this and he has some solid reasons for his position. And then we finally we get to the worst of the worst. Three different people said it's time for a woman. And then Moore said, uh, oh, she's got more energy and more intelligence. There's no, like, there's no actual way to measure the intelligence thing. <laughs> like, oh, I get, you can have all of them take an IQ test, but don't do that. That'd be really weird. Um, but, like, that's a weird thing that happens with, honestly, higher income liberals, where they have this, like, fetish towards intelligence, even if the person is screwing them over. 
they think, but they're so smart. Yay, so smart. It's, it's really strange. It's like West Wing syndrome, where that becomes their, like, the main thing they care about, and they put policy on the side. And that's stupid. It's just really dumb. And the energy thing isn't even true. I'm sure if you, like, broke down the number of events that they've done respectively, Bernie has probably done way more events than Elizabeth Warren, so he definitely has more energy. And the idea that, well, it's just time for a woman, but at the expense of what? And that's what frustrates me, because when you hold that up as, like, this is the reason, it's like, okay, well then let's test how important that really is. What if you had a situation where it was Barack Obama versus Sarah Palin? Like, that was the election. It wasn't John McCain, Sarah Palin ran for president, got the nomination, it was Obama versus Palin. Who would you support? What are they going to say? They're going to say Obama. Okay, take it out, because they could probably say, well, that would have been the first black president, so of course, we're getting some minority points. It's not the woman, but it's a black guy, so okay. All right, scratch that. What if it was Biden versus um, Sarah Palin? I'm asking the, this person in the rally. What would they say? They'd be like, oh, I support Biden. Okay, so then how important is it really to you? the genitalia of the person that's running. Now, don't get me wrong. I get it, man. We've never had a female president. I understand that inclination of, like, that seems really unfair because, obviously, for a lot of American history, they were excluded from the process, and that's not right, and that shouldn't be the case. It should have never been the case. So I get that inclination, but you have to ask yourself, at the expense of what are we talking about here? If you had Michelle Bachman versus some reasonable lefty, and you as a lefty support Michelle Bachman, then you're stupid. You're valuing something way too much. And the, the fact of the matter is, guys, they wouldn't actually, it, with these hypotheticals I set up for them, they wouldn't vote for Palin. They wouldn't vote for Michelle Bachman. But that's my point is like, I want to let them know, you don't even think this is as important as you think it is. <laughs> it's not like, it matters. This stuff all matters. We want to have a system where it's open, and equal and just, but that cannot be your prime reason for voting that way. To actively pick a worse candidate on the issues simply because of their genitalia is really dumb. And it kind of is like that right-wing caricature of a lefty. Like, that's the right-wing caricature. These guys are so unserious that they care more about identity politics than substantive issues to the point where they even pick a worse candidate solely because of their gender. And that's, don't be that, don't embody that stereotype of the left. And unfortunately, a lot of these people did. And then the funniest one was age. Now, I grant you that Elizabeth Warren looks way younger than Bernie, but she's really not that much younger than Bernie. She's not. She's in her 70s, too. So, to bring up age is like, no, <laughs> you can't do that. She's also in her 70s, because somebody could easily turn around to you and be like, I don't like her age. That's why I'm voting for Mayor Pete. And you'd be like, what? No, that's not fair. Exactly, that's not fair. <laughs> that's not fair. What matters is the cognitive abilities. And there's a real conversation now, and in that conversation, Biden ain't faring so well, and, you know, um, everybody else is faring well. So, anyway, you see an interesting... You see an interesting dynamic here, which is some Elizabeth Warren supporters are reasonable, and they say, hey, listen, here's my logical reason for supporting her, ending the filibuster. Here's my logical reason for supporting her. I agree with her philosophy. She's a capitalist, sports regulation. That's me. She specifically spoke on the issue that impacted me and me losing my home. I get it, man. Those people are reasonable, and I'd be willing to make this uh, prediction, although we can't test it, but my guess is those two people, one who said I wanted to end the filibuster, the one who said about losing his house, I bet you if they didn't vote for Warren, they would vote for Bernie. So you get some Warren people who are re really reasonable, but then you get others, like, it's just time for a woman, and the, you know, what was the other one? She can, she can get for more demographics, and, oh, she's got more energy and intelligence, and, it's, like, all those silly arguments, those are the unreasonable people who, even if Warren was out of the race, wouldn't go to Bernie. So you get this weird subsection of voters, and, um... It shows that she has that weird dual. You know how we always spoke about how she has one foot in the establishment camp and one foot in the lefty camp? Well, this is kind of being reflected in the people who are voting for her. 
Some of them are coming from a more centrist establishment mindset. Some of them are coming from a more lefty mindset. So that is something to be a little concerned about. And this is why we have to fight harder than ever politically to try to get Bernie across that finish line.